Firstly, Kevin, can you just tell us a little bit about the academy restructure and, and what is happening there? Yeah, so a big part of my role before obviously coming in during COVID was we were going to look at the academy structure and it's been relatively unchanged since its creation really. So the club in the background have been going through their own football strategy of which the girls and women's have got a, a big part in that. And also that's kind of correlated with the SWF and SFA women's strategy as well into football. So we felt this was the right time to try to align all these strategies together and have a look at what we do internally within the academy. So we would all that up and we've communicated that across all our key stakeholders, the players of course, the parents and the coaches and in terms of next year we'll go to three teams so we'll run dual age bands, 14, 16 and 18 so that's quite a bit of a, a change from, from what we're running just now but we feel that the reasons for doing that will help with player challenge which is also really important. We want to make sure that all the players in our academy are getting challenged not just in games but every day in training. I'll also help with the best v best model that we want to try to get to where we'll make sure that the teams that we go ahead with in January will get that best v best provision and uh, we feel that's important and as well as that our individual care as well and support that we can give for players so with uh, the changes that we're going to do that allows us to better cater for those individual players as well so things such as individual development plans making sure there's a clear focus for every single player as well as doing a lot more on analysis and sports science as well. So I'm really excited about the changes. I think it's going to have a, a huge impact on the academy here for the better. I think it's going to help create a better experience for our young players in the academy and hopefully give them all the tools to fulfil the potential. And in terms of the teams and, and players here, what, what will happen over the, the restructuring and what will the new academy look like? So currently we've got five teams. Um, we're going to consolidate that down and that's in line with an ongoing kind of review and that will reduce to three. That probably f for wider context means that in Scotland everything used to be amalgamated so recreational and elite were all sat together and it feels like now is the right time to be able to kind of separate that off so for those players that want to be and can aspire to be which is amazing a professional football player that they've got a really clear pathway in that uh, process and knows that want to go and spend time with their friends and um, be happy, be fit, be healthy. I've got an opportunity that they can just go and enjoy that and enjoy a bit more flexibility around about that. And can you just tell us a bit about what stage the restructure is at just now and, and what the next few months will look like? Yeah, so as I said there, I think we, we entered into a period of consultation in the summer of this year we gave information to the parents, players and staff that changes were likely to happen towards the end of this, this year and we were waiting on the outcome of the SWF and SFA strategy just to formalise that plan and once we knew that plan we got all the key stakeholders, so the, the coaches who are affected by it, obviously the players and the parents, we got them into meetings at Ibrox and we explained to them the process of, of the direction of where we're going, why we're doing that, what the rationale was behind that. So we're at that stage now where everyone's been consulted that process is still ongoing with the staff uh, currently and then the final decisions of, of, of players being retained will obviously happen in, in December um, and then obviously we'll then look to relaunch in, in January so quite a lot of work um, between now and, and then but as I said to you, you know, although it's difficult, it always is difficult in academies that you see young players leaving your academy but we'll make sure that we give them the best support uh, as much as we can and, and then we look forward to January with the players that that are with us in January as we then launch the, the new academy. And you did touch on it a bit earlier at, at the very start there, that obviously there's been significant changes in the women's first team over the last few years. How important is it that the academy follows in, in some way now? It's huge and it's not just the responsibility of Rangers, it's the responsibility of the Scottish Football Association that women's football is in such a, a rapid growth at the moment. And in Scotland we need to be able to have the structure and support mechanisms in place for young girls to ensure that they can actually achieve their ambition of playing professionally and we would love for that to be in Scotland but we want to be able to produce the next day on Cuthbert. So it feels like it's the time for everyone to kind of work together to be able to come to a consensus about the best way to develop female elite youth players and uh, find a way forward. And with the changes over the next few months, you, you touched on it a little bit of uncertainty maybe for, for players and some of the staff. How will they be supported by the club over this time? Yeah, I think that's 
easily the most hardest thing, uh, certainly from my point of view, that we're having to, to navigate through. Um, it's never a nice time in academies when that has to happen. It's really important that the players get that care and support that they need. We are very fortunate here that we have a player care team that will be with them every step of the way should they need it. We've rolled out through Arlene and other staff the Get Set programme, which is a, a programme aimed specifically for girls to help deal with self-esteem, confidence, resilience, etc. So every player in the academy will get that, that support in that programme as well, which will hopefully give them tools to, to help navigate through the next couple of months and beyond their time at Rangers as well. Um, the staff will obviously have that consultation and again get some more support that, that they need if they, if they require that. And then we've also, you know, myself has been in dialogue with over 40 clubs now that are happy to to be an option for players should they leave Rangers as well. So we'll have a, a pack, a player pack that every player will get um, to give information of clubs that are looking for players in those age groups. We'll follow that up after they leave the club as well to make sure that they've settled into their new club. So the support that we are putting around, we hope, is, is quite robust uh, and hopefully people will recognise that we, we know and, and feel that that's a real important part of, of this process and, and why we're so committed to, to put as much time and effort into it. So, yeah, that, that for me is the most important thing over the next couple of months.